Hello, you lovely people. Hi, you kindly folk. It's been a while since we last met our adventures left unwoke. We've got our maps and dice in hand and tales that still provoke. Together we will journey on our laughter will evoke. Throughout the magic realms we'll go as friendship grows and grows. So hello, you lovely people, and hi, you kindly folk. Welcome back, adventurers. Before we dive into today's episode, we want to give a huge shout out to Ari for that brand new intro song that you just heard. It's a fantastic addition to the show, setting the perfect tone for what's ahead, and we hope you love it as much as we do. I'm your host and Dungeon Master Kyle, and today we're going to be picking up where we left off. But first, a recap of the previous session brought to us by Talus. Beginning of our last adventure, Tatiana and Ortega made their way into Moggies and Mongrels, a pet shop nestled in the bustling heart of Ankara. This wasn't just any pet shop. No, this was a haven of oddities where the air shimmered and hummed with magic. There they encountered the eccentric Moggy, a shopkeeper who seemed to have an uncanny knowledge of every critter, beast, and familiar in the city. To their surprise, they also bumped into an old friend, Toast, our favorite Aormaton, who had somehow landed a job at the shop, perhaps by fate or some bizarre twist of coincidence. Tatiana was thrilled by the prospect of acquiring a dragon companion, but after failing a very difficult pet ownership exam, she was guided towards a curious contraption. That magical machine held within its depths a menagerie of random magical creatures waiting to be discovered. Tatiana tried her luck half a dozen or so times, and soon fortune smiled upon her in the form of a tiny but fierce micro dragon. With her new companion, tucked safely away, Tatiana rejoined Ortega and the two set off to reunite with the rest of our party. Meanwhile, Ari, Parrish, and I found ourselves in the middle of the swirling energy of the Lux Run Casino, the air crackling with anticipation. Moments earlier, we had witnessed the enigmatic lizard Lil Miss Crispy clinch a victory in her race, thanks in no small part to a stirring melody from Ari himself. But before we could claim our winnings, we were swept away by a group of enforcers who escorted us up a grand staircase past opulent suites into a private velvet draped chamber. There we came face to face with the man of the house himself, a mysterious man named Shaman's Paul. He greeted Ari by name and the two seemed to share a dark history. Paul revealed that he was in league with the Consortium of the Vermilion Dream, a faction intent on finding the drowned city of Kale Moreau and sealing it away forever. But when the name Lafayette was uttered, tensions flared, pistols were drawn, and Parrish and I made sure Ari knew that no matter what, we had his back. In the end, a tense truce was struck. Ari handed over a single bullet, promising that no harm would come to Shaman's Paul while we remained in the city. We soon reunited with Tatiana and Ortega on the buzzing casino floor, but the confrontation had left Ari in a pensive mood, and our minds were now flooded with more questions than answers. Ari strode towards the door, his eyes searching for a place where cold drinks flowed and music warmed the soul. One by one, like moths to a flame, we followed him, ready to face whatever the night had in store. The banded broken are taking a moment at the end, and as the group regains their strength and prepares for the unknown, new questions begin to stir. Will they find the answers they seek, or will new challenges rise from the shadows? Stick around and find out. After having such an eventful day for all of you, you were all sitting around at the quiet inn that Ari had found. After some reminiscing of stories and memories shared, some old, some new, you all start to head on in your own way. Ari, you get yourself a room. Parish, you, you know, become part of this inn already and already manning the bar yourself. Tatiana, Ortega, you decide to head on off to your own room. And Talis, you get your own room as well. Ortega and Tatiana. After sharing some quiet conversations amongst yourself among other things of course (laughs) naturally you 
get to talking. And of course, more other stuff. The idea that they're so loud about it is just like on brand like and just wow. Of course. Oh yeah, no, totally. They're completely loud and obnoxious in every way. <laughs> it's it's kind of the normal for you guys at this point. Anyways, after you guys have fulfilled your night of the carnal duties and the vulgar duties of your relationships, you... The vulgar duties of companionship? What? Oh my god, Kyle! I would just call them regular provides. I just had tea come out my nose. (laughs) You deserved it. Yep. Anyways... While you two are in the midst of your pillow talks, and even maybe slightly before the pillow talks, Ortega, you were noticing that Tatiana, during the heat of the romance, the claws that had kind of started to come out a little bit, and um, she was biting you a lot more, and the tattooed runes all over her body, you started to notice that they were glowing in a very different form of a glow. And it was odd to you, but you didn't... Ooh, fancy. You didn't really care in the moment. It was more so just things that you had noticed and you'd picked up on as you were enjoying her presence, so to speak. The other thing that you started to notice was while things were so heated and as it calmed down you were reminded of a scent one that you hadn't really smelled before at least not for a very long time it wasn't a, an odor that you were expecting to smell especially with Tatiana and it started to bring back memories of a certain someone else. No offense, Tati. You reek of the fae. I have no idea what you're talking about. You don't smell like anything other than lovely. I always smell lovely. I'm not saying the fae doesn't smell lovely. I'm saying you're not fae and you smell fae. Whatever. And Ortega's kind of gonna look over himself and go, you're starting to become unnatural. Unnaturally good, yes. I need you, you, uh, complaining. It's not that. Just reminds me of someone. That's all. It's not you. And this little glowing trick your tattoos have. What are those? You explained how you got them, but I've already more told to it you. Than I don't know. Something I'd like to find out. Ortega's gonna lean in real close and just take a big whiff of her back along one of the tattoos. It's definitely fake. Well, if the smell doesn't bother you, I don't see how it's a bad thing. So I've had enough of this conversation. I'm going to get dressed and go and have some breakfast. Nazi, how am I going to hide all this? Sounds like a you problem. And I'm going to pull on my clothes, blow him a kiss, and walk out the door. Ortega's going to pull on his pants and walk out and go, no, it's a you problem. As he doesn't have um, a shirt. Didn't doesn't hear you complaining. I gotta say, man, arguments made shouting down a hall while putting on pants don't land great. Oh, they're gonna be wonderful. I'm expecting all the looks from everyone. No shame. Talus. You, on the other hand, had an eventful evening all in a different way. At first, it was hard for you to fall asleep. You were tossing and you were turning and playing with the Jewel of Three Prayers in your hand and thinking about Ayo and thinking about everything that's gone on. And you... You realize you hadn't really heard from your friend in a long time. Or at least not since you've been to On Corral. And you really start to think back... Before you know it, you find yourself drifting off back at the cottage that has now become familiar to you. You see the light is on in the interior, yet you know that there's actually no lights in the interior. And you see that the door is open with a chillingly warm inviting presence 
to motion for you to enter inside. And as you find yourself standing at the dock, you look around and part of you feels at home now. And you, what do you, well, well, what do you, what do you do? I think I'll just, I'd like to like stand on the, like on the edge of the swamp just for a few moments and like take it all in, take a deep breath, gather myself, and then I'm going to head towards the open door. You slowly enter inside and sitting there at the, well, not sitting, but uh, she's kind of just standing there as she's normally prone to do. You see Saigon yet again in her darkened, shadowy form. She looks at you and she says, It's been a while since we last spoke. Tell me, puppet, how are you liking this new desert city? Cat is fine. It's good. It's, I don't know, all cities seem the same to me. Yes, yes, of course. For you, cities, your cities there, they're all the same. But I must digress. I have been very proud of you. And of course, I can tell. Marquette and the Jewel of Three Prayers. They haven't been the only thing on your mind, has it? It's... It's not... Broken love weighs heavily on your mind. It's not important. It's just... Very important to you. It's, it's just a distraction. It's... I have more important things to focus on, and it doesn't matter. You're right. It is just a distraction. And it shouldn't matter. The only one that you should really trust and enjoy the presence of is your dear old friend who has been there for you through thick and through thin and who has blessed you with all of these powers and fantastic abilities that you would be otherwise without. Yes. Never forget, of course, that it's always been me that found you by that river that day. I will be there until after your friends have come and gone. But I do have a question for you. And I wanted to know, are you upset when I took your beauty, your vanity, your pretty little looks just to save your friend. Has that taken its toll on you? Do you feel like you have been punished for asking too much of me in such a little time? No, not, I'm not upset. It's just something I had forgotten how difficult it was to live without. So I'm not upset. It's just, uh, I understand and I will, it'll be fine. And I was just wondering if there was a way that possibly I might be able to get it back. Well, I'm no one if not for my love of forgiveness and giving back to those that 
love me. So, my dear Talus girl, yes, I think you have served your penance long enough. You do not need to worry about looking like that old, decrepit hag that you were any longer. Of course, I do hope that You understand where I had to come from. You see, we are in a give and a take relationship. Everything that you want me to give you, I do have to take something in return. But for now, I feel like I have done everything that has been expected of me. And you, of course, have done everything expected of you. You still have the jewels, and that's perfect. Thank you. Is there anything else that you would want from me? No, you've... It's... You've done so much. I... Thank you. Since we're in the spirit of giving, and I do have one small, minute favor to ask of you. You see, in order for you to continue to have these powers and abilities, I too need to gain more power. I need you to find me those that would like to worship me. The more worshippers I have, the more powers I can give you. In your pack, when you awake, you will find a very unique quill and a contract similar to the one that you and I had done up so long ago. But you'll notice that every name is blank and it is up to you to find those worthy of filling it in for me. Can I do that for you? Good. Glad to hear it. And you will probably be asking yourself where to start. Well, I can tell you that those in your party, maybe not that blunt hunter friend of yours, would be interested, maybe? No, no. Yes, let's make sure she doesn't find out about these contractual agreements that you are creating for people. Also, too, I kind of had my eyes on one of yours. You happen to have met an old friend of mine. Who is that? I think you already know. Your new friend, Parrish. I suppose I did wonder, but okay. I'm sure that he could be persuaded. I will do my best. And only your best will do, of course. Anyways, it's getting late for you. You're going to awake soon. 
We should probably get on with that. Cheerio, Talus, darling. I will see you soon. And just like that, as soon as you blink once more, you realize that the sun is now shining through the window. The arid heat of the desert is parching your lips. You look over to the pack and you see a quill but has no ink and a single parchment sitting on your bed. I'd like to reach over and and pluck it out and can I like unfurl it and read exactly what it says? Yeah, you can certainly try. However, when you unroll it, you realize that it's written in demonic. And I, can you speak demonic? No. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, obviously, like you can understand that it is some sort of agreement. It's a contract between two people. Yeah. It's very similar to the one that you signed. Okay. It's at this point that everyone sort of starts making their way back down and. Obviously, we see Parrish, who has pretty much made himself breakfast and everyone else at this point. I was up at 4 a.m. I probably got my position and breakfast made. <laughs> nice. I like the idea that, that Parrish is sitting down there as the owner comes stumbling down the stairs at like 5 in the morning. And there's this brilliant breakfast. And he's like, do you want this? <laughs> yeah, okay, good. And then this Parrish takes over. Yeah, like fully I broke in. <laughs> <laughs> Are you just kind of looking down, stirring his coffee? That is more whiskey than coffee, and um, looks up to every looks up to uh, Talus and Parrish, two who were with him when they met Shaman's Paul yesterday, and says to them, "And his, his, it hasn't been up since they've been here, but the, his 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 face mask is up." Um, and he says through it, um, "Appreciate you being there. Last time I just uh, didn't want to see another bloodbath like I've seen in that office." That man, believe you me, I have no intention of being shame or embarrassment. That's just mine to you. I also need to know that I will at some point need your help getting that bullet back. That bullet is the whole key to his safety in our little crew. If I can steal it back before we leave town, as long as I use it, there might be a chance for something to happen to that man. But in the meantime, I didn't want to lose any more friends to him. Thank you for being there, though. I'm sorry about how that went down. Ari, you should not be sorry for being pulled into a situation like that. I'm sure Captain Talus and I are both just happy that you weren't in it alone. I have to say, I am a little disappointed that, well, I didn't want it to become a bloodbath. You told me not a few days ago you were going to do everything with this second chance. I'm sad to see that we've fallen in with the same sword again. Not that I hold it against you. I hold it against me. I thought it was a chance to keep us safe. Parrish, there's not many things that I'm afraid of, but that man is one of them. I can't lose. Also, you look different. The hell happened with you again. I'm glad I'm not the only one who noticed. No, I mean, I've been been very sad and mostly stirring my coffee, but looked up for a moment in the hell. Hi. You look like you found the cure for decay, so please do share your skin routine girl to girl. I could also benefit. I don't think we need to be gendered about it. I mean, I, I, we, all, we all wrinkle Tatiana. I mean, what, jeez. I think I'm, uh, saying, what, I'm selfish. It's fine. I think Talus has kind of been a little bit distracted during this conversation. She keeps, like, glancing down at her fingers, or she'll, like, touch the side of her face, distracted to kind of like well like glance off try to like catch a reflection in a window or something i i want to do an insight check i just i feel like i would also like to do our insider investigation or take it would just like to make a stealth check okay sure yeah oh i noticed nothing you are acting perfectly normal rolled an eight i I rolled a six (laughs) well i I rolled a two technically but i have a plus four if it's insight then that's a then that's a 12 for me if it's if it's investigation it's still an eight my self was a 21 
Okay, but like, why were you doing a stealth check in the first place? Oh, I'm trying to scare the bejeebies out of Ari while grabbing his shoulders and just going, and I'm the other one, right? Of the one that scared him. Because he was like, this guy's all like, one of the guys that scares me. And Ortega's going to be like, and I'm the other one, right? That's that's what our that's what Ortega's trying to do. <laughs> I'm gonna lean in a little. Do I roll for scared. being scared? I'm gonna roll for being scared at least. Uh, I'm gonna lean in. I rolled an 18. So, uh, what's what would, what, what's my saving throw from being startled by a bully? So, uh, charisma. Wisdom is a plus two. Charisma is a plus two. So that's a dirty 20. Suck it. Yes, I still win with my 22. Oh, that's bullshit. Okay, I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess like Ari is like a little startled, but I wouldn't say he's he's scared. You know, he turned, he wasn't expecting to see there. He goes, well, you know, like, hey, okay, like, get out of here. <laughs> So as I look at him, I... He holds you in the chair, like your body means to jump, but like he holds you still in the jump. (laughs) As you jump, as your head's right next to me, you freak me out for a second, pull down the mask, give you a little kiss and say, get the fuck off me. As for the insight checks, I mean, obviously, like, yeah, you're not really able to assess, like, exactly how she got her beauty, but you can probably safely assume that there was something more at play that may have transpired in the evening or at some point during the night. I, I'm i actually going to lean in real close to Talus and almost, like, cup her chin in my hand and I'm gonna like be staring at her skin and I'm gonna say damn Talus I have to say in comparison to yesterday you almost look edible um lean back Ortega is gonna mention to uh Ari I'm just glad it wasn't a gun in my neck this time Talus make a uh perception check for me please oh my god (laughs) okay I think it was disadvantage because Tati was holding my face in her hand. It's because it's there that you're making the check. (laughs) Uh, That's a 10. What do I have to bet? Six. That's a 60. So you notice on her breath and just like her her aroma um, that she's very almost pungent in a a scent that is familiar but not identical to some things that you've you know hailed before in the past um kind of about one point when right before you were found by Saigon you notice that is definitely something fey in origin um Talus is going to uh black out a little bit and um just uh like blink a couple of times uh refocus center herself and go oh, uh did you say edible if that's what you want to hear I am hungry though and I believe, although I apparently missed a bloodbath and I was promised a bloodbath, I am owed a bloodbath. Ari, I believe you also possibly won some gold for me on your little lizard race. You mean my my sexy lizard race? Yes, I do believe that was one where I won a certain amount of gold. And maybe yeah. the whole thing went sideways, but I'll still take your coin. Well, I gave you 30 coin before we left for the pet shop to bet on your lizard. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, no. Oh, yeah. No, that was not. Uh, mm. Oh, I did not exactly get paid out. Oh, did I get paid out by win? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Shaman's Paul gave you some money. Oh, I did get paid out. <laughs> I, I uh, certainly uh, came into winnings, though admittedly not the way I had expected. As a heads up, I met the old uh, crime boss I used to work for. Didn't go great, and I might be in a spot of trouble. That said, he gave me this money for our winnings. We might want to check it. Wait a second. Do I have, I have identify? Do I, do I have identify? I do. I'm going to cast identify on the pouch he gave me and I want to see if there's anything up with that. You quickly cast identify and you see that the pouch 
is glowing with some arcane energy. It is a bag of holding. Can I tell at all what's in it from the identify? You can't tell what's in it. You can only stick your hand in and, and either grab the contents or um, quite literally dump everything out if you need to. How much? Yeah, yeah I'm going to look in it. Uh, well, I mean, to be honest, I'll, I'll, I mean, we're all sitting around a table as I say this. Put the sack on the table, I identify it, and I would then communicate to the group, guys, I think what we have here is called a bag of holding, uh, a pretty nifty contraption that can hold a whole bunch, and I wouldn't mind taking a bit of a gander. Me wouldn't mind. As long as I get to eat afterwards. As long as it is not me. Parrish will take the wine and coffee off the table and set them on the bar. Look, just in case, I would rather have them not spill. All right. Uh, bad move. Let's uh, stick a gander inside. And I open it up and I look inside the bag of holding that I got from Shaman's Palm. You look inside and you realize that there's definitely money in here. And you, you're able to pull out a, you know, a, a couple of coins at a time and then you're taking out a handful and, and then another handful. And sooner than you know it, you're almost dumping it. And fools? Okay, you got it. Okay, good lord. As you kind of bend over the table and you, you start shaking all the gold out, you're you're finding gold pieces and silvers and copper and, and a couple platinums even as it's kind of dangling out. It, it might be a payout of some sort from maybe beforehand or maybe it was just the amount of money that Shaman's Paul had on him at that pouch at that specific time. 300 total in terms of gold pieces but for everyone else they only see the gold Ari you see a little tiny bullet fall out with the initial L scribed on it Ortega seeing Ari dump all the gold on the table is going to immediately scan the room to see who all could be watching on this early morning of a ton of gold school on the table being that it's pretty early on in the morning there's not really a whole lot of people in the in this inn it's a, it's a bed and breakfast it's not really like that big of a deal here uh, the only person that really seems to bat an eye is the, the bartender who starts to pull the nicer bottles off the shelf when he notices. <laughs> As for everyone else, they look over their shoulders for a second and eh, it's too early for them to care. Most of these people are all tourists. They're not like the petty crooks that you have seen before. No one is interested. It, you know, people have money at this this inn and they, they pay for the quiet and that's exactly what you guys have done. Ari doesn't really look at the money, but I pick up the bullet and he quietly says, not sure how much more I care about that damn code. He puts the bullet in the pocket. Ortega will ask, who's that one for? It was a man I loved named Lafayette was everything me. I wrote my first song about him, never played it for him. We were part of the same crew working under James Paul and a job went real bad and he died. He died because of me, never should have been there. And this is Shaman's Paul's way of screwing with me in a way that breaks my heart new. Now I think he might have been involved. I was sure he must have died there. So yeah, this bullet changes everything. I'm gonna put it in his head. While everyone's talking, I'm gonna reach into my little coin purse and just pull out my little itty bitty micro dragon and just like place it in the heaping pile of coin that's been left on the table. And give a little pet on the head and start like reaching off of like whoever has plates of food and grabbing little pieces of like meat to see if it wants a treat put it down and kind of scurries and burrows its way inside the gold pieces and kind of <laughs> as it like rolls around and pokes its head up and takes a little bite of your of your little treat that you've offered it you notice it's got the one coin that it came with is kind of like tucked under its arm like a toddler with a stuffed animal at night as it's kind of like cherishing it and then it ducks back down and and it pokes its head up again and grabs another one of your snacks and then you see it like roll around and every so often it blasts a little bit of fire to kind of heat up the snacks that you're giving it and over some time it just kind of sits there and lays on top and curls up in a dragon-like fashion and you see it starts to snore ever so slightly as it lays with its coin and falls asleep well watch 
Glass are going to leave it. Well, that thing is quite precious. Um, glad it's there to guard the hoard. As Parrish will set the bottle of wine and pitcher of coffee back on the table. Just kind of put a hand on Ari's shoulder. Whether or not he had anything to do with what happened to Lafayette, I truly don't believe it was your fault. And I truly don't think it would sit right with me if we worked with this man. Not even if he threatens violence. Please don't betray yourself. You know, I'm happy to kill anyone with you, Ari. This little nightmare is precious, isn't she? Look over to Ortega as he's hearing what they're both saying about going to potentially kill Shaman's Paul. And he looks at Ortega. What do you think? From what I've gathered, I think he's useful to us. He's guarding the place we want to go. How can we use that for our advantage? And do what you want. I'm not saying no, I'm just saying not yet. And I finally look over and say, Captain, what do you think? I think it says a lot about you, Ari, that this code is so important to you. But in my experience, men like that use those kinds of codes to protect themselves. They're not for people like you or me. They're for the ones at the top. And frankly, I don't have a problem with breaking a code like that. Especially when it's to get back at an asshole like that. I'd like to say again, I thought it best we don't work with them. But if there is history you need to pack up, I'll say, take a look in your heart and see if killing him would be the better choice. With that said, I think his mouth still has a few too many teeth in it. How long do you live by that code, Ari? Not one more night. And pull the, the bullet and I sing, recognize that we just got to town. I had not intended it in the starting a war on the first night, but I've never had a former mob boss send me a bullet with my partner's name on it. And to me, that changes everything. We might make enemies, we might make friends, and nothing else is full of we'll buy this bullet. We'll find a better place to live. I would like to discuss potentially now, like, I mean, a bit meta. I think we might need to plan an assault on this guy's compound, or we need to figure out how to weaken his his weaken his setup enough that we can go and kill him. And I'm not sure if this is a one phase thing going in guns blazing. I'm not sure if this is a thing where we need to potentially like, I, I would I would maybe take a look at his network and see who I can take out if there's someone we ought to first. There's a lot that we can do and there's a lot of different directions. Ortega would definitely lean on, let's do reconnaissance, even if it means doing a little work for him so that we can learn more about him because he's guarding the place we want to go. We can came here to take those jewels to that damn place he's guarding and keeping people out of. Build the guard, open the gate. Yes. Work with the guard, learn about the gate. Potentially make money, potentially build contacts, potentially die. He sent me a bullet. Like, do we Difficult see this as work. somebody that we can handle right now or that we need to grow into to handle down the line? Uh, I think there's a set, uh, maybe a slightly different choice where instead of working with him at all, we uh, find ways to hurt him in ways that uh, I'll get in his way. We find a little bit about out his network because you know he seems to be really running the show when I'm willing to bet we could find out if we ask around well or if we threaten people or if we do things the right way we can find out ways to squeeze Shaman's Paul by the balls I've always believed hurt is more, is more justice than kill and let's make it hurt I would be more than happy if we want to make him hurt uh, uh, it's gonna take time I feel like Parrish has an idea about that no no, I was just musing that I would be more than happy to help rip down an empire like that. And to make sure everyone knew, any enemies we make taking a stand against a man like that are enemies I'm very glad to have. I didn't meet this man, so I'm going off of your three. Oh, honestly, let me tell you, Ortega, seriously, I think if you'd been there, you would have driven size through him like six times. It would have been like hackety hack, hack, hackety hack, a drum solo on this guy's clap. You would have destroyed him for being such a douche. Seriously, I have seen you wreck folk for decently less. And I'm not saying you wreck folk with reckless abandon. This guy, epic douche. You 
would have ruined his day. We all also probably would have gotten shot a lot, and I can honestly say, might have been worth it. All I can Good say, Ari, is that I've been set free. I'm not the same. I don't want to go in with reckless abandon. I want to meticulously take this man apart for you. But that's not something we can do quickly and emotionally. Well, that's where what's going to get start? us killed. Where do we start then? Around this table, we have an operative of the night, a barbarian with brilliance. A mysterious, I am not quite sure why you still look different. Impressive captain. She's got friends. And a holy uh, man who keeps a book of everyone who's died in his arms. And with that group of people, I think we can take down that empire. So where, with this group of people around the table, do you all think we start? I vote we work for. We learn too much from not doing. We learn way more working for. We learn where we want to go ourselves with our own goals. We learn more about him and his goals, and then we can decide how to get rid of that. I think it might give him too much control. He wants us to work for him. He can certainly dictate what we see, what we hear. He does not think that Ari is going to play nicely. He's already aggravated him. At least being a part, he can't taint whatever information we can glean as much. I think it's better if we ask around and investigate outside of his structure than being inside of it. The man is a manipulative master and he won't miss an opportunity to misguide us or put us into danger. Plus, he sent me this. At this point, if I go and work for him, pull a bullet in the back of my neck before I have a chance to leave his office. We hunt him. We hunt him, but we do it from the outside, not the inside. We ask around, we work sources, we explore this city. We make a difference while we do it. And along the way, at some point, we kill him. And if then we decide what we want to do. you think the only justice you want, I'm okay with that. I'll follow you to that. But what you're saying is a very, very long way about doing it. If we act from the outside, it's going to take longer than acting from the inside. As far as we know, he only knows about myself, Fari, and Captain Talus being partied up. The two of you might have an opportunity. You can explore things and learn things with impunity without it being tied to information that we know. You can find out what's going on here and find out where to hurt him. You two can work together to get us a first target. From there, we learn things. Let me tell you something about his operation. They're slick, but they're a little bit lazy. And I'm willing to bet when we start pulling at one thread, they'll unravel. You take a look around. You really push. You will learn where to make Shaman's Paul bleed. I don't know how many times I've said this, but I am about to hunt a fire, and I could be his cup of tea. You also really need to take a bath. Why do you keep saying that? I smell wonderful. There's a certain yeah. funk. I wasn't gonna say anything, but there, I mean, there's there's a vibe. I'm, I, maybe it's maybe it's maybe it's me. My natural musk. I'm not sure. You reek of more fey than I do. Can I smell it? You can certainly s- smell something, but it's not really anything that you've been able to, you know, attribute it to or, or, or whatever. But it is, you know, a- along with the glowing runes that have not seemed to have subsided since she's awoken. Um, it's it's now becoming abundantly more obvious that she has an odor. Um you know, even her eyes are starting to change color as well. Already, if you get cool. any closer to me, I'm gonna help myself to a snack. I haven't moved. I'm still sitting right here beside Ari on the far side of the table. Now that now that Ortega has said the word "fay," do I have any sense of what this smell is reminding me of? <laughs> Not like a hundred percent, but you haven't really like announced that part of your life yet. Yeah, great. Thank you. Uh, I will go to the bathhouse. I will go by myself because right now I'm not interested in any of your company. And then I am gonna go and see if mob boss or whatever his name is needs a bounty hunter for hire. So I will see you all later. And I'm gonna get up pissed off 
clearly, because you all told me I smell funny, and I'm just gonna walk out of the tavern. Let us know what you find out. Our, 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 oh, our, sorry, was that scene going on? Or, or Dega is talking Was there a scene going on with Ashley? Or? She left for the bathhouse. Oh, sorry, I thought that was the sort of a scene. My bad. In which case, Ari goes, looks at you. Gotta go to the river district. Care to join me? We never did have that walking talk back in. I don't even remember where we were. We've been That's to lots of places, day. you and I. How about this? You work with me. Find more about Shaman's Paul's organization. I'll take your damn walk with you. I want your word. You don't need it. I, do. I will help you. I will and always help you. Lead the way. Prove it soon. Ortega is very obviously looking for a specific place in the River District, of which I cannot remember what it is called, but that's where he's going. Um, You're going to the bakery. Yes, the bakery. Okay. Not Old Man Krug. Oh my god. Achi doesn't remember where the bathhouse is, just so you know. It's also in the River District. So Ari and Ortega just happen to be like 500 meters behind Kathy as she's walking down. She left and like just went. You know the thing when, you, when really. you're leaving a place and you've already said goodbye, then it turns out you're walking in the same direction for like 200 more meters? It's weird as hell. No, Probably that. No, she's not turning around and acknowledging either of you. She's so mad. I'm telling her she stinks. I feel like Talus is just still sitting at this table, like having seen everybody left, and then she's just like, okay. Well, I was hoping to gather some more information about the city working at the tavern. If you wouldn't mind keeping me company, at least until I get my feet under me. I don't know what you are going to get up to today. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, A lot to think about. Yeah, maybe I'll just stay here. Your complexion's cleared up, or so everyone says. I did notice. Ortega, uh, Tatiana, and Ari decide to head off into the direction to the to the, the river district towards the bath's house and Old Man Crooks. Um, Tatiana, you're a little bit in front of them and you're kind of just giving them the finger the whole way through because you're pretty mad at them at this point. You don't really stop to talk and every now and then you do look back just to make sure you're kind of going in the right direction. What do you guys do? All right, it's, it's been a long time, time since we... I'm sorry, I'm just distracted. Honestly, she has not stopped giving us the finger while still walking forwards. It's just an, it's just an impressive beat. Wow, yeah, she's had an attitude recently, but <laughs> we'll get to that. Me and you have been wanting to have a chat for a long time, Ari. And, well, I felt like this might have been the best opportunity. We yeah, haven't had a lot of time to just, uh, uh, we used to be a, a duo for uh, so no. long, and now it's been a bit, and uh, it's nice traveling the roads with you again, Ortega. I've never seen you hate someone so much. That's about right. It's got me tovered, Ari. I really want to help you, but I don't think that that's a quick and easy fix. I think it's going to take a lot of time. I gave him that bullet, and that means that he's safe from it until I take it back. Now, we can do it by stealing it. We can do it by getting intelligence first. We can do it a lot of different ways, but Ortega, I will kill that man. And I'll be there to support you. But right now, I'm worried about Tatiana. Her mood swings are outrageous. Most times it's behind closed doors, but they're getting out of Are you certain you're not just kind of being a dick? Not that you mean to I find you you charming as anything. She smells, pardon? She smells of the fae. Still? Her runes, her tattoos, they they reek of the fae. And I think that might be leading to some of her temperamental changes and I think it's got to get fixed sooner than later that's why I have enough experience with glowing tattoos to know that they don't wait or take I need to sorry just kind of looks down and his hand rests on his gun and then his hand goes to his loot that uh, that toast made him and he looks to Ortega and says I have vengeance on my mind but you have my heart I'm with you Ortega if you need to do this now I can tell you are not usually like this. This is a whole other kind of liking somebody. This is even getting on that other L word that I only sing about and don't say with words. I won't. I didn't say it. I stopped. I didn't say it. But what I am saying is if this matters a lot to you, if this is what she needs. I have your back, Ortega. Oh, you're, uh, you're muted there, boss. I'm just 
just scared. All right, the last time I felt this way, well, we both know it didn't go so well, and I don't want to go back there, and I'm scared that fixing her might take us there. I know what you mean. I hear you, and I want to say don't be afraid, but I can't without lying to you because I don't know. What I will say is no matter where we go, you won't go alone. You don't understand, Ari. I can't lose control again. And I'll keep you in control, or at least I'll be the first person to fall. But Ortega, you are not the same creature that came through, and you are not the same being that did those things. And it's a weight around you, and I'm not here to tell you that you deserve to take it off, but I am here to say that I'll carry it with you. But you can't stop her, Ari. She has my soul. Careful with that and get messy. I'm pretty positive that it's already been messy once. Well, then listen, we'll go to this store. And frankly speaking, Shaman's Paul has gotten under my skin as if he already wasn't living there rent free. We'll get to that later. And frankly speaking, you're right that we need to take a slower, smarter approach. So that leaves today wide open for us to deal with what you need to do with Tatiana and for yourself. I appreciate you understanding, Ari. You know, Ortega is just gonna you. put his Ortega is gonna put his arm around Ari's shoulders and kind of bring him in for a little bro hug. Ari responds with a bro huggy like side tap on the like the uh, the like the lower ribs, but far enough away from the hip that it's like okay, and uh, it's a little broy, but it is also <laughs> the first time that they've ever embraced. And with that, Ari takes a quicker step forward, looks up to still see Tatiana popping birds, grabs his ukulele, uh, or his loop rather, and strums away with a smile to Ortega, feeling more at home than he has in a long, long time. Ortega and Ari, you finally make your way to the River District, and you part ways with Tatiana, and you come to a tiny little bakery. It's cute. You can smell the the bagels being cooked. You see as you walk in the the actual baked goods themselves don't actually look all that appetizing. You see cupcakes without icing and you see a cake with where the it's like a wedding cake but the the cake topper is all melted and um there's <laughs> uh breads that even have mold on him it's it's as if the you know this this old baker this orc he's it's not really his his real job so to speak and you walk in and you see him and oh what can i do you for we're here for the baker's dozen. Oh, the baker's dozen. Who sent you? Just told not to tell you. That's what I like to hear. Well, are you placing an order or are you picking up? Exchange. Placing an order in your... Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well. And he looks around and you see he pushes a little button and the door closes behind him and the shutters and you see all the baked goods kind of go down into the floor and another area comes up and he takes off his little baker's hat and he puts his apron down and he puts on a blacksmith's apron and ties it around and gets a little tiny monocle and pulls it down and gets ready and he goes all right show me what you've got Ortega's gonna reach into his pack and pull out the mask and slide it onto the counter. You see, old man Krook looks at it. Mm, this looks otherworldly. Do you do you have any intentions with it? Well, I prefer that nobody puts it on, but that seems counterproductive to what you may do for a living. Mm. Well, if it's an item and it's cursed like this, which it probably is, gonna have a lot of trouble. Uh, I would suggest you don't put it on. Oh, <laughs> don't worry, I'm not gonna put it on. But I'm gonna have a hard time getting rid of it. So, I can give you two options. One, you can take something in the store today, but I can't guarantee its value. And I can't guarantee the mask's value. Or you can wait a day. You can come back in the morning and you can come pick up what I've deemed of value to you. If there's anything specific I can acquire for you, it might be up your alley. Well, what do you have in the way of armor? As Ortega looks down at his spare chest. Well, anything's better than nothing, I suppose, but 
I have a few options that I can look into that's going to be based on the resale and the price value of what you've given me, but with a cursed item, otherworldly, there's going to be a very few amount of people who are going to want it, so it's going to be priced pretty high, so I can assume they're probably going to get, uh, you know, in terms of quality, probably a rare, rare quality item, something that's not too big, not too small, and we can, I can give you what we got here, but it's not going to be anything good for you right now. Well, I guess I'll have to stop in tomorrow sometime. Unless I get caught up on business, and maybe it'll be a day or two, but That's I'll stop in. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll make a, uh, a little order form for you. When your order is ready, you can come pick it up. How about that? Sounds good. How are you telling me when my order is ready? You'll know. And he pulls out a piece of paper. You can see that it's magically enchanted. Just gets glowing already. And he puts it down and he looks it over and he quickly takes off his glasses and he puts on his baker's hat again. And he goes, okay, so what we have here is looks like we've got um, one croissant. Okay. And that's in exchange for one baguette. When that, and I sign, I sign it. And he gives you the quill. He says, if you sign that, when when you see that the croissant disappears on this chat, or on this, on this, this chit, you'll know your order's ready. Sounds good. All right. And is there uh, anything else that I can do for you today? Maybe uh, a couple of donuts or... Yeah. What I've seen, I don't think baking is your top priority. I think I'll pass. All right. It's fine. You're not wrong, but man's got to make a living somehow. Mm. But you're right. Anyway, how about this? Though? And Ari, Ari just chimes in a smidge. I think I'd love a donut. I think I'd love a baguette. I think I'll take both whipping the secured price, assuming that while you're doing your research and finding things, you might find a little something for me. You seen these before? He pulls out his pistols and he puts them on the counter. I'm looking for things to improve how they work or improve what they shoot. <laughs> maybe you've come across something, maybe you haven't, but for now, take a donut and a baguette and then I will be back with Ortega. Well, I've come across a, one or two of these firearms in my day. Usually there's a group of people that pick them up pretty quick, but the ones that are picking them up are also dropping them off. <laughs> Now you kind of remind me of one of them. Anyways, really? that's all I'm going to say about that. Client confidentiality and whatnot. At first, I actually thought you were part of the crew. But you didn't use their code words, so it ain't you. Anyways. Of course it's not. I'll see what I can do. But if you, you see ammunition, that can make a difference punching holes through things that have a hard time getting holes in them. You let me know. All right. Come back with Ortega, and I'll have something for you too. But yours is going to come at a cost. You, we're, Ortega and I are doing exchange. Yours is going to be a cost. I understand. You take a look and see what you can find. In the meantime, I am hungry now and would like the donut and baguette. Sure. Yeah, of course. Um, chocolate or vanilla? Yes. Perfect. And he just hands you one. It doesn't look like it's either chocolate or vanilla. <laughs> like, it looks like maybe he didn't use enough cocoa in the mix. So it's like... No, like, I'm sure they're not good. Yeah. It's but good. I will humor him and I will flip him one gold piece um, as a start for now. And he, and Ortega's just that I'm just going to leave with Ortega as we did otherwise and uh, let that be that. OK, perfect. It is at this point that we unfortunately lost contact with the banded broken. However, the other party, Io and Dermot, went looking for them. After the crazy commotion that has happened, which will be explained in a moment, Dermot was a little nervous to be in on Corral. Heading to the last known location of where the bandit broken was, he saw a lone guardsman lying face down, deceased. Dermot looks to Io and goes, um, well, I might be able to to find out some answers here and um, just bear with me. It's a new spell I haven't really used it yet. So, and he goes to the guardsman and he casts speak with the dead and he says, uh, hello, hello, um, what happened here? 
as the guardsman's body begins to stir back to life, animated by the spell, but not returning his soul to his body, merely working the muscles, bone, and lungs like a mechanism. It all happened so fast. Too fast. The streets were calm when my shift started, barely more than 30 minutes ago. Hong Crow was his usual self, sun beating down. Merchants haggling, the crowds thick but moving, like every other day. Nothing felt out of the ordinary at first. I was on patrol with Mike, talking about nothing important. Just another routine day. People were coming and going in and out of the bathroom. There was one woman, caught my eye, had pale skin and fangs, peeking out from an angry smirk. Thought to check on people later. But before I could, a loud crash came from inside the bathhouse, like something heavy had fallen or been thrown against the wall. That was the moment the city turned. A man wrapped in nothing but a towel burst through the doors. His body was mangled. Light marks tore across his chest and arms, blood running down his skin. He stumbled into the streets, screaming for help, but it didn't get far before he collapsed. People rushed towards him at first, confused, but when they saw the blood, the panic set in. I ran towards the bathhouse to see what had happened, sword drawn when more of them came, the dead. It's less than a minute before everything unraveled. The crowd, people who'd been laughing and chatting just minutes before, screamed in terror as they realized what was happening. There were too many bodies to count, pouring from the bathhouse, their flesh rotting, their teeth gnashing, bangs. After the first few seconds of chaos, two adventurers showed up, appeared to be a tiefling with a gun at his hip and a hulking man, the weapon on his back. Me and Mike argued with them at first, but when we realized the dead were overtaking everything, we tried to buy as much time for them to get in and do what they needed to be done. It was then that I looked over and saw the bite on Mike's arm. I didn't think much of it at first, just another injury in the chaos. He didn't look anything like one of them yet. It was then that the gunslinger burst forward, shooting his gun to draw the attention of in the chaos, returning shortly after with two more, a man in painted gleaming armor, and a woman who looked like she had too many secrets, carrying a pistol as well. Shortly after they all returned into the bathhouse was when Mike lunged at me. First he turned slowly and I knew something was wrong the moment I saw his eyes. They were blank, no recognition, no fear. I barely had time to react. I tried to push him off, I tried to reason with him, but he was already lost. His teeth sank into my throat before I could even get a proper swing at him. The last thing I heard was the roar of the crowd the screams echoing through the streets as everything went dark. As the body slowly deanimates. Dermot, upon hearing this revelation, he looks around and looks at Io, and Io, looking around, looks confused. The bandit broken is nowhere in sight, but you can see the remnants of the, the destruction. Whatever happened with Tatiana, we'll never know. And that, dear listeners, is where we leave off for now. The Banded Broken's current whereabouts are unknown, leaving us all on edge, wondering what awaits them next. The mystery deepens, and we'll have to wait and see where their path takes them. Before we wrap up, I do like to apologize for some technical difficulties in this episode's recording. We did everything we could to deliver the story, and we truly appreciate your understanding and patience. I'm your host and Dungeon Master Kyle, and thank you again for sticking with us, and as always, a big shout out to MAB Music for their amazing ambience that brings our world to life. Until next time, take care, and we'll see you in the next chapter.